Welcome back to Saucy Sounds, Zach here. So today's lesson is about relative majors and minors. Um, and essentially what a relative major is, a relative minor, um, all it is is just two keys that share the same key signature. So if you know your major scale, you actually already know your natural minor scale and vice versa. So let's get right into it. So we're in the key of C. And we have these white keys are the notes. And so what's really cool is this C major chord actually doubles as a minor chord. So C major and A minor are the same thing. And let me explain to you why. So we've got C major, C, E, G. And what's really interesting is if you start the C major scale on the sixth degree or the sixth note in the scale, which is A, we get A natural minor or A, um, a olean. Um, and so what's cool about that is you actually get two scales and two chords out of one. So what's really important about this as a piano player, especially the piano player, is when you get into rootless voicings. And so a lot of times uh, people are like, hey, you know, what are these cool rootless voicings you're playing? Well, understanding relative major and minor will take that to a whole other level. So back to the relative minor, um, you take any major scale and you simply count to the sixth note. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six. And that is the relative minor. So in the key of C, the relative minor is A. So that means we can take C major and put it over an A, and we'll get an A minor chord. Uh, let's go to the key of D flat. Count six notes up, one, two, three, four, five, six. And now we can play D flat major over B flat, and that is a relative minor, okay? And this works for all 12 of the keys, um, all 12 of the major scales. So take any major scale, let's go to F. And so what's six notes in F? One, two, three, four, five, six. So that means F major and D minor share the same notes. And that's really powerful because it helps to condense um, the theory. And what I mean by that is this. When I'm playing, let's say, F major, I already know that that F major, not only does it work over an F bass, but I can also turn it into D minor just by modifying the bass. So when we get into chord substitutions, uh, this is really, really important. So, but in a nutshell, a relative minor is simply um, a minor key that shares the same signature as a major key. So you don't have to change any notes and that's what makes it so powerful is the simplicity of it all. Again, if we're in the key of G flat, right? These are the same notes. We're not changing them. And if I count to the sixth note in the scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, so that means G flat and E flat minor are exactly the same. The only thing different is the note that I'm starting on. So let's take a look at that um, G flat notes. So if I take these uh, eight notes here and simply start it on E flat, boom, we have the A, the E flat Aeolian scale, as you actually shows on the screen, how convenient. But anyways, so that's how that works. So I didn't change the notes. I simply changed the starting point. So they share the exact same notes, and that's what makes them relative. So they're like cousins. So when I'm playing G flat major, I know that I can stick an E flat at the bass to substitute. Okay, so let's kind of go through all 12 keys. We got C. One, two, three, four, five, six. So C and A minor are the same. We got D flat, D flat and B flat are the same, right? And then D and B, and then E flat and C. And we got E, C sharp are the same. And we got F and D. And we have F sharp or G flat, same as E flat. G is related to E. G major is related to E minor, and then A flat major is related to F minor. A major is related to F sharp minor, and then um, B flat major is related to G minor, and then B is related to A flat minor.
and we're back at C, which relates to A. So this is really, really important to practice and memorize. Um, you're going to be using this relationship all the time. And if you don't know it, you're really limiting yourself. Um, and you're probably, um, you're just limiting yourself. And you pr you might know it like playing it, but then if you can like practice it, exercise it, and get it in your brain and recall it at moments will, this will really uh, expand your chord vocabulary overnight because you're literally doubling. You're taking what you already know and you're doubling overnight just by applying this. So next time you're playing C major, just know that you can substitute A minor at any time. Right? So if you had a song that was going one to the four to the five, rather than going back to the one, you already know that you can reharmonize it by going to the six. So you can go one, four, five, back to the one, four, five. Instead of going to the one, go to the six. Four, five, one. So that's how you find out your relative minor. And it goes the opposite way as well. So it's vice versa. So if you have a minor scale, the relative major is the third note. So if we're in A minor, we just count up three notes. So for an A minor, we know that A, C major is relative major. Okay, so study that, practice that. I hope this lesson was quick, but it's potent. Um, again, this is really huge, especially when it comes to reharmonization. But practice that and really, really get it ingrained, especially as a piano player, because like, like I said, once you get into rootless voicing, if you aren't already, this is huge because a lot of times we're not playing the bass note. The bass player is playing the bass note. And you have to be able to know, like, hey, if I want to play E minor, I can actually just focus on playing G. And so it looks like G major now, but you put that bass note, it's actually the E minor, 11. Okay, and um, you know what, that's one last thing I want to mention, too, is understand that when you're playing a C major triad, it is not related to A minor triad. It's specifically a minor 7 chord because you're adding an extra note. So what's a triad is now a seventh. And if you're playing C major seven, it's now gonna be an A minor nine. Right, and then if you play a C major nine, it's now gonna be an A minor 11. So let me actually talk about that for a second. That's really, 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 really important because all these chords are different. Yes, they're all A minor, but the sound is extremely different. And that's what's really important because obviously music is about sound. So if we have a C major triad, right? So any major triad, I'll write this on the screen. Any major triad doubles as a minor seven. Any major seven chord doubles as a minor nine. And any uh, major nine chord doubles as a minor 11. So you have to add two, right? C major now becomes... A minor 7. C major 7, right? A major 7 chord now becomes a minor 9, and then a minor major 9 becomes a minor 11. So if we're playing uh, F major 7, this now, its relative minor would be D minor 9. You see that? So we want 1, 3, 5, 7, but now we have to add that D. So now you have 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Okay, so if we do um, G flat major, right? We have G flat major seven, F sharp major seven, however you want to call it. It now becomes E flat minor nine. If we have F sharp major nine, it now becomes E flat minor 11. So you just make sure that when you're converting these that you add to and you recognize like what it's going to sound like. Because again, major seven sounds different than major nine, which sounds different than a major triad. And you can mix and match them, but you need to do it intentionally. Like, don't just put making a nine just because you might want it to be a seven. So just be careful about that. Um, but I think that's pretty much the, the concept. Leave any comments below if you have any questions or uh, any other lesson ideas you'd like to learn on some core theory. But this is a really good one because, like I said, especially as a piano player, uh, piano player and guitar players, we spend a lot of time playing rootless. And so it's really important for us to know the different inversions and types of our chords so we can lock it in. So G flat major seven or G flat major nine will be E flat minor nine, right? Um, and again, G flat major triad will be E flat minor seven. So again, relative major is the sixth. To find the relative minor, you play a major scale and you go count to the sixth note. 
okay? To find the relative major, you start in your minor scale and you count to your third note, okay? And they are interchangeable. So, um, or what's the terminology for that? Not interchangeable, but they are, they're mirrored. So the relative minor of C major is A minor and the relative major of A minor is C. So as long, once you know one side, you automatically know the other. So C major, A minor, they're always connected. And I like to think of it as 16. And the reason I like to think of it as 16 is easier for me to think in numbers, but one is the C and it's related to six. So I just think 16 in my head. So no matter what key I'm in, the one is always related to the six. If I'm in the key of F, the one is always related to the six. If I'm in the key of G, the one is always related to the six. So I know that if I'm in the key of G, I can always play G major over the E, and it'll make sense. Alrighty, so I will catch you guys in the next lesson.